At first, it appeared to be a typical night, no different than any other night before it. However, the night felt different. The atmosphere was filled with an eerie and bone-chilling cold, a cold only found on a long winter's night. With the crisp and frigid winter air assaulting my senses, I made my way home from what felt like the longest day of work I had ever had. The stillness of the night was broken only by the sound of my footsteps crunching against the snow-covered ground. The icy breeze cut through me, sending shivers up and down my spine. It was as if the entire world was asleep except for me, and the freezing temperature compounded the chilling feeling of being alone in the dark. Suddenly, a deafening crash echoed through the silent night, piercing the stillness. The sound was so intense that it continued ringing in my ears long after. An unfamiliar fear started to creep in through the icy air. I fought slowly to open my eyes, trying to regain focus to access my surroundings as I lay helplessly trapped, surrounded by the debris of what was once my car. I tried to move, but the pain was too intense, and I could not escape the twisted metal cage now surrounding me. My leg was pinned and crushed, and I could feel blood trickling down my face. As I wiped my face with my shaky hands, I looked down to discover blood everywhere. That's when my panic started to set in. I immediately began to take in the full extent of my injuries and the hopelessness of this unexpected situation. I could not find my phone anywhere. Even if I could, how would I even use it? As I tried to look around, I couldn't see through the blood dripping down my face. I realized I was not prepared for this and may be in trouble. I feared I wouldn't make it out of this alive. Just as I was about to lose all hope, I heard the distant wailing of an ambulance siren. As it grew louder, I could start to see the flashing of ambulance lights coming into view through the fog. Relief washed over me as the paramedics came to my aid, freeing me from the wreckage of my car and loading me onto a stretcher. I was rushed to what I believed to be a nearby hospital, where I hoped to receive the medical attention I desperately needed. As the ambulance raced through the darkened, wet streets, I fell in and out of consciousness, I could hear the sound of the wheels underneath me, putting me into somewhat of a trance, but I still couldn't shake the feeling that something was not quite right. I had a creeping feeling in the back of my mind that something terrible was about to happen. As I lay on the gurney, I began to feel a sense of unease. The hospital seemed to be a lot more aged than it should have been. The staff appeared to be dressed in older, unwashed uniforms. But I pushed my worries aside, focusing on the pain and trying to stay conscious. Still not sure if I was alive or dead. Dreaming or awake. I was transported into what appeared to be an operating room, where I was anticipating receiving medical treatment. However, as I lay on the hospital bed, waiting for the doctor to arrive, I became acutely aware of the pungent odor of death and decay that filled the air. The overpowering scent was almost too much to bear, but as I struggled to maintain my composure, my focus changed quickly when I noticed a figure walking purposefully toward me in medical scrubs. He approached with a steady and determined gaze. I couldn't help but feel a sense of apprehension about what was to come. At first, I was relieved for a second or two, believing that I was finally in good hands. But as the figure leaned in closer, I saw an unnatural crazed look in his eyes and fresh blood stains on his gloves and clothing. As he gets closer to the gurney, I want to get up and run, but I notice that I can't move my arms or legs. I have been strapped down against my will. My heart races, and I know that something is terribly wrong. I began to look around, taking in my surroundings. I realize this is no ordinary hospital. It looks as though it's been abandoned for years. The place that I found myself in was different from what I had expected. Instead of a place of comfort and healing, it was a place that exuded an aura of terror and death. I didn't think the man in front of me was a doctor at all. If anything, his appearance was more reminiscent of an individual who had escaped from a mental institution. 
The untamed hair, unkempt beard, and a wild, crazy look in his eyes only added to the unsettling impression that this person was not a healer but a monster in disguise. As the highly concentrated sedatives began to take effect, I was overtaken by a sense of helplessness. I could no longer fight against my captor's will. As more people entered the room, he and his medical team prepared to perform a sinister operation on me. Their movements were lethargic and unsteady, and the sound of maniacal laughter echoing from all directions filled me with dread. My gaze shifted toward the table where their instruments of torture lay. The tools were old, rusted, and stained with a mix of dried and fresh blood, adding to the already horror-filled atmosphere. The thought of what they might do to me, being restrained and entirely at their mercy, was a complete nightmare. I must have dozed off because I woke up to the sound of heavy footsteps approaching, and soon after, the door slowly creaked open, revealing the monster to torment me once again. Hours passed or perhaps it was only minutes. I couldn't tell. The only thing I knew was that I was still alive, but barely. I must have been paralyzed from all the drugs they had injected me with earlier because I couldn't feel or move anything, not even my face. I was losing blood fast. I tried to scream, but no sound escaped my lips. The figure leaned in closer, his eyes glittering with madness, and I could feel that my end was near. But suddenly, I was awoken from my nightmare by the sound of crackling flames and the smell of smoke. Sounds of the raging inferno now filled the once peaceful silence of the night. The hospital was in chaos as the raging fire spread, engulfing everything in its path. The heat was extremely intense, and the smoke was choking me, making breathing difficult. I tried to move and escape the raging inferno, but my body was still too weak from all the punishment I had endured. I was trapped on a gurney, unable to defend myself against the crazed doctor and the growing flames. The sound of shattering glass, exploding equipment, and the crackling of fire filled the air, creating a symphony of destruction. The hospital was falling apart, and it was painfully obvious that I was powerless to stop it. I could feel the heat getting closer, the smoke becoming thicker. I knew that I wouldn't make it out of this hospital alive. I never believed in God, but this was clearly hell. So in my desperation, I prayed for a miracle. I prayed for someone to come and save me. But in the back of my mind, I feared it was already far too late. The fire was fiercely closing in, consuming everything and everyone in its ravenous path, ready to consume me next. Just as I began to accept my fate, strong and mysterious arms undid my restraints and lifted me from the bed carrying me to safety. I awoke once again in a real hospital, where I received proper medical treatment and began to recover from my injuries. Although I was improving, an unsettling feeling persisted. It was as if something was not quite right like I was the target of a joke with an elusive punchline. The line between reality and my experience at the hospital is unclear, leaving me uncertain if I ever truly escaped or if I simply return to the familiar world of reality. Driven by a need for answers, I started an investigation to uncover the missing and mysterious parts of my time at the haunted hospital, piecing together the fragments of the past in a desperate search for the truth. The search for information about the past of the hospital was a difficult journey. At first, it seemed that someone had gone to great lengths to conceal the truth, but my persistence eventually paid off. After months of research, I uncovered the hospital had a dark history as a mental asylum. Tragically, the asylum was destroyed by a fire set by one of its own patients who had snapped and murdered the majority of the staff. The raging inferno claimed the lives of the remaining survivors, leaving behind only ashes and haunting memories. The once burned asylum has since been reconstructed and transformed into a new modern, functioning hospital. However, on a fateful night, the boundaries of reality seemed to blur and merge in a way that defied explanation. The convergence of different worlds, 
dimensions and time periods all happen simultaneously, leaving me bewildered and searching for rational explanations. And yet, I'm alive. I'm the only survivor of a tragedy that happened years before I was even born that should have claimed my life. I'm still left with feelings of fear and uncertainty, wondering how I survived when everyone else perished. And what other unsettling horrors lurked in the shadows? I am consumed with a burning desire to uncover the truth, to understand what is happening in this haunted hospital. Despite the fear that grips my heart, I am determined to face it head on, confront the unknown, and unravel the mysteries within these walls. The thought of unearthing potentially frightening truths scared the hell out of me, but it only fueled my determination to uncover the reality of what occurred during that fateful night. I suppose that anything is possible in a world where even the dead can return to torture and haunt the living, where the line between reality and nightmares are blurred. All I know is that I must learn the truth, no matter how horrible or frightening it may become. Above all, what perplexed me the most was how this was even possible in the first place. What was the purpose of this experience? Who had rescued me, and for what purpose? These questions raced through my mind, causing me many sleepless nights and great distress. I felt a sense of uncertainty and ease about my situation and my future. Most of all, I was troubled, wondering if this might happen again? These questions left me feeling lost and alone in a world I no longer understood. I knew that I was caught up in something much larger than myself, and I was already in way over my head. 